Okay, so in this physics 11 lesson, what I'm going to do is just do a separate lesson just talking about vector components. Okay, uh, it kind of needs a little bit more of a review and a little bit more of a refresher. It kind of realized maybe kind of glossed over it a little bit too much. So we're just going to look straight up at finding components of a vector and then using those vector components to be able to find overall displacement. Okay, so we won't look at too, too many examples, uh, but I do want to just kind of go over a, a more step-by-step -step instruction how you actually find components of a vector uh, because it is a key thing that we're going to use not just in finding displacement but in future physics lessons when you're trying to find uh, you know horizontal and vertical components of let's say a force which is kind of coming next after we finish all of our stuff with uh, velocity and stuff like that okay so let's take a look at something a little bit more clear with uh, vector components okay so uh, there's your joke of the day, okay. and when we talk about vector components, right, just so you can kind of have them here as, you know, a key definition here, uh, components are parts of a vector that lie on the axis of a coordinate system, okay. Since components are confined to one direction, they are scalar quantities and they're not vectors, okay. So it's just going to be a value in, in the x and a value in the y. However, what we will be doing is we will be assigning them as either positive or negative, in terms of where they fit on like a coordinate system, right? So if they're uh, going to the left, right? So th those X values would be negative. If they were going down, the Y values would be negative. If they're going to the right, uh, the X values would be positive. And if they're going uh, up, like if they're in the top two quadrants, then your Y values would be positive, okay? So like I said there, with vector components, we revert back to X and Y coordinates, right? And we don't necessarily talk about them as uh, north, south, east, west. Right? Uh, but we will kind of revert back to that if we want to talk about the overall answer. Okay, But when we just talk about vector components, we just go back to a coordinate system and whether their x values are positive or negative and whether their y values are positive or negative. Okay, So here's some kind of overall steps that, you know, if you've been struggling with the vector components aspect of it, uh, this might help you. Right, So if you're wondering how do I do this, you start by drawing the vector with its tail um, at the origin of the coordinate system. Okay, so when you're starting, right, um, right, so start out tail at the, or like start at tail at the origin, and then like at the zero, zero point, and then identify, draw whatever the vector says it to draw, right, identify the angle that the vector makes with the x axis and label it as theta. Okay, so this is meaning you may have to look at the angle direction you've been given and switch it, right, based on what it makes with the x-axis, not necessarily what it makes with the y-axis, okay? Uh, then what you're going to do after you've kind of drawn that first vector, you will draw a vertical line from the tip of the vector, right? So your tail started at the origin, so then draw a vertical line from the tip of the vector straight up or straight down uh, to the x-axis, right? So that it meets the x-axis. That, whatever that value is there, that's your y component, okay? Then what you'll do is you'll draw a horizontal line from the tail of your vector, right, so back from the origin, going straight across to that vertical line you just drew, okay? That will be the value of the x component. And because you already have that angle value of that it makes with the x-axis, you then have a right angle triangle and you can use your Sokotoa, right, basic trig to solve for your x and your y components. If you always follow this set of rules, your x component will always be found using cosine and your y component will always be found using sine, right? And then you can always just double check using Pythagorean theorem to make sure it's correct, right? So I'll kind of run through those steps again with these examples, just kind of make sure we're okay, right? So let's just start with a single vector. Let's not talk about the sum of the vectors at this point. Let's just talk about a single vector and break it up into its x and y components, right? So we're being asked to find the x and y components of vector d, which has a magnitude of 64 meters at an angle of 120 degrees. So let's see how we would draw that. Okay, so first off, you might be thinking, angle of 120 degrees, how am I even supposed to draw that, right? If we're talking bearings of like north, south, east, west, that's only within 90. So here's the thing, if you're being given an angle that's more than 90 degrees, right, again, you're thinking about like a four quadrant Cartesian plane, Right, so it's kind of like x, y, right? Always start here, 
right? So I don't think, I don't know if you've gotten the section in pre-cal yet about angles in standard position, but you always start from the positive x-axis here, and then you would rotate 120 degrees, okay? So a vector at 120 degrees, this would be 90, and then we'd have to go another 30 to draw the vector, right? So this is my vector D being drawn. This angle here is 120 degrees, right? So again, I followed that step where I drew my, the tail of my vector was at the origin of zero, zero. I drew it at the angle that they, they've told me, okay? Now I find, right, we'll just kind of even go back and forth to those steps just to kind of show you, right? Identify the angle that the vector makes with the x-axis, okay? So that would mean figuring out, well, this is my vector, my x-axis is here, right? Obviously, we know this is 120, but I can't make a right angle triangle out of that. But instead, if I figure out this angle in here, I can make my right angle triangle over here, okay? So that's 120. What would I need to get down to here to 180? And it would be 60. So this would be a 60 degree angle, right? So finding the angle that it makes with the x-axis, okay? Next step, right? We go back to the steps. Next step is saying draw a vertical line from the tip of the vector to the x-axis, right? So here's the tip of the vector. I'm drawing a vertical line straight down until I meet the x-axis. This is the y component. Okay, I'm calling it yd because it's the d vector. Okay, that's the y component. Next step was Right, draw a horizontal line from the tail of the vector to the vertical line you just drew. Right? So tail of the vector to the vertical line I just drew. That horizontal line is now the x component of our vector. Right? Now I've created a right angle triangle where I know that this length was given to me in the question of 64 meters. Right? And now I have a right angle triangle where I can solve for YD and I can solve for XD. Okay, now in doing so, right, I'm just using Sokotoa here. So the XD is the adjacent side to the 60 degrees and the 64 is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So solving for XD would be using cosine, right? So it'd be cosine of 60 is equal to X over 64. So getting X is just going 64 times cosine of 60. Okay, so that's the calculation you're doing there. And you get that that's a value of 32. Okay, now looking at that Cartesian plane, right? So if it, this is still our XY plane here, notice how I'm in this quadrant over here and any point over here would have an X value that's negative, right? Or I've gone west, right? I've gone to the left. So that magnitude is 32 but if we're thinking of it, it would be a, a negative value because it's gone that direction, right? Or it's in that quadrant with negative x values. The y values here, right? That's the opposite side length with the hypotenuse. So you'd use sine to get that one, right? So you would do 64 times sine of 60. Okay, and then if we do that, we get a value of 55.4 meters. Again, looking at that y value, you're up here in the top quadrant, right? So the y value is positive, right? Or if you think about it, you've gone up, so that would be considered a positive direction, right? But you've gone up and you've gone to the left, and left is traditionally given with negative values, okay? So these are the x and y components of that vector. That's all you would be doing if you were being just asked, which is what the question was, for the x and y uh, components of the vector. All right. Uh, so again, you're seeing that there, right, with uh, kind of the step-by-step -step instructions, right, of what this angle is here, right, there's the 120, that's the 60, right, uh, this one kind of shows the line being drawn at the top, but it's the same value as what's being drawn down here, okay. Uh, and again, you get that value there with the 32 and it being negative because you're in this direction to the left. And uh, this one just rounded to 55, right? I should have actually used two sig figs and left it as 55 myself. 
right? And then that's your value for the y component, okay? Uh, let's do another example of that. If you wanted to pause the video and just kind of see if you get these answers, by all means do so, but I'm just gonna do this one um, again on the whiteboard and then we'll do one example using like a combination and doing the vector components and getting the sum of all of them as well, okay? All right, so in this one, uh, what we have is a car is traveling with a velocity of 34.5 meters per second in a direction of 39 degrees south of west, and we would like the components of the vector. Okay, so let's do that. So they've given us bearings again, right, but we can still kind of do it in the exact same way. All right, so what we start with is again thinking of this as like a Cartesian plane, right? And our xy's can be the same as our north-souths and east-west lines, okay? So we're drawing a vector that's going 39 degrees south of west, which is the same as west 39 degrees to the south. So if I start at west, I'm then gonna go 39 degrees to the south, right? Starting at the origin, right? I'm going 39 degrees to the south. All right, so there's the first thing, all right, and that's it had a value of 34.5 meters per second. Okay, now my next step is to figure out what is the angle that's made with the x-axis or the east-west line, all right? Well, it's actually given to us right in the question in this case because it said it was 38, 39 degrees south of west, so starting from west and going 39 degrees south, so that's fine being there just as it is, right? Our next step, drawing a vertical line from the tip of our vector up to the x-axis, right? So if we extended this x-axis this way, okay, that's our y component, okay? Um, I think they've called this one vector a, so that's our y component. And then drawing a horizontal line from the tail all the way to the vertical line we just drew, that's our x component, okay? So what we have is again a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse value of 34.5 meters per second, which means all of these things will also be in meters per second, these would be velocities, right? We have the angle and we can use cosine to find x and sine to find the y component. In this example, right, our vector ended up going in a direction of south and west. It ends up both to the left and down from where it originally started, meaning this x component should be negative as well as this y component. Again, if you were thinking about this as an xy coordinate system, anything in this section, any coordinate point, would be a negative negative, or it would be a negative x and a negative y. Okay, so that's what we're going to be using there. All right, so we can then solve for those individual vector components, and we can say uh, okay, so for our x value, it's going to be the 34.5 times the cosine of 39. All right, so we quickly do that. Which is a value of 26.8 meters per second. Again, it went left, okay, or it's in this downward quadrant. So that's going to be a negative value. Our y value is going to come from the sine because it's the opposite side length with the hypotenuse being 34.5. Right, that gives us a value of 21.7 meters per second. Again, it went down from its original starting point, so that would also be negative. Right, so our x and y components would be uh, negative 26.8 meters per second and negative 21.7 meters per second. Okay, going back, right, and again, we get those same values there. So the final one we're going to look at is ones that we had kind of been doing when we were looking for the displacement and using kind of all of our trig law of sines, all cosines, uh, to figure out displacements, but we could have also done it with vector components. All right, so let's just kind of do one more of these examples together, just kind of going over again uh, vector components. So when you're doing it with multiple vectors, you break each of the steps into its individual component part, right? Each of, and then, so look at each of the vectors 
and break each of them down into x's and y's, then add all the x's and add all the y's to get your total answer. All right? So you could um, start by drawing the overall diagram here, though, uh, to get a good idea as to, like, in general, what are we going to be looking for, right? Um, or you can skip that step altogether, right? Um, I will skip it altogether. We've kind of done a lot of examples here. Um, but what we're doing is we're breaking this down into its individual component parts, right? So the very first thing, so this group of friends is on a nature hike. They're starting from home base, which we'll consider the origin here. Uh, and they make the following movements. And the first thing they do is go 2.65 kilometers west 40 degrees north. Then they go 4.77 kilometers south, 18 degrees west. From there, they go 3.18 kilometers south, 75 degrees east. And we're looking for their overall vector, uh, overall displacement using the vector components. And we want uh, magnitude and direction of overall displacement. So let's get into this. All right, so our first vector was... 2.65 kilometers west, 40 degrees north. So our V1 here, right, so starting at the origin, right, you can kind of draw those in invisible north, south, east, west lines, right? We went west and then 40 degrees north. So starting at west and then rotating 40 degrees to the north, this is the vector that you end up getting, right? And that had a value of 2.65. Kilometers. Okay, we want to figure out what is the angle that it makes with the x-axis. Well, that was kind of nicely given to us because we started at the x-axis anyway with the west and then went 40 degrees north. So we do know that that is a 40 degree angle there. Right. So again, starting from the tip and coming straight down to the x-axis, that's our going to be our y component. And then from the tip of this vector, sorry, the tail of this vector, and then going straight down to that, meet that line there, that's our x component of the vector, right? There's our right angle triangle. So we go and we figure out those values again. Uh, the x value would be from cosine, the y from sine. So our x1 is that 2.65 multiplied by the cosine of 40 degrees. And we do that, just when I did out, and we get a value of 2.03 kilometers and that went west it went left so that value we're going to assign as negative the y component there is going to be found using sine ratio so 2.65 times the sine of 40 degrees multiply that out and you get a value of 1.70 kilometers ultimately that vector went up right it went going north and that we would assign as a positive value Okay, now we look at our second vector. I'm probably going to have to erase these at some point. I don't think I'm going to fit three on here, right? Our second vector went 4.77 kilometers south, 18 degrees west. So again, you can kind of think of this, right? We went south, 18 degrees west, right? And this was our 18 degrees, okay? And our value on that vector was the 4.77 kilometers. Using our steps for vector components, we would like to know what is the angle it makes with the x-axis. This is the angle that it makes with the y-axis going straight up and down. We want to know what angle does it make with the x-axis. So since this is a 90 here, I'm just going to go 90 minus 18 and get 72. Okay? And that's the angle we're going to use in our triangle. Right? So from the tip of our vector, come straight up to meet the x-axis. That's going to be our y component. And go from the tail and meet that line. That's going to be our x component. Right? There's our right angle. And again, x would be the cosine because it's adjacent to the 72. y would be the sine. It's the opposite. So we set that up. Right? x2 is the cosine of 72 multiplied by the 4.77 kilometers which ultimately gives us a value of 1.474 kilometers. And again, we've gone, so the overall vector went this way. It went down and to the left, 
both of which are negative connotations, right, down and left. So if we're going to sign that negative, the y value is going to come from the sine of 72 degrees multiplied by that 4.77 kilometers. And that gives us a value of 4.54. And again, it went down, right, overall where this ended up was a downward direction, so we give that a negative value. All right, there's your second one. Okay, now we go for V3. So that third vector, which was given as uh, south 75 degrees east. So again, if you think about that, right, there's your origin, and you're starting at south, and you're going 75 degrees to the east. So you're doing that, where that's a 75. However, again, there's another angle that this is the angle it makes with the y-axis. We would like the angle it makes with the x-axis. So I need to do 90 minus 75, and that gives me a value of 15. So this is the angle we're going to use. We're going to use the 15-degree angle in calculating that vector. Okay? Uh, and sorry, that had a value of 3.18 kilometers. All right, so again, from this tip, go up to, in this case, you'd have to go up to the um, x-axis. That's going to be my y component. And then from the origin or from the tail, go and meet it, and that's going to be my x component. In this example, I've gone, this overall vector has gone down and to the right. To the right would indicate a positive value, so this x value would be positive. The down indicates a negative value, so the y value is going to come out being negative. All right, and again, finding them using your law of signs, or sorry, just Sokotoa, right? So x3 here is going to be that cosine of 15 degrees multiplied by the 3.18 kilometers, and that gives us a value of 2.99. And again, because it's moved to the right, that would be assigned as a positive value. The y value is going to come from the sine of 15 degrees multiplied by that hypotenuse of 3.18 kilometers, which gives us a value of 0 0.802. And because it went down, we'll assign that one as negative. Okay, so we've now got all three of those vectors broken down into their vector components. So for overall displacement, we need to find well, what's the sum of all the x components and what's the sum of all the y components? So that's our next step. Okay, so the sum of all of the x's, right? So x1 plus x2 plus x3. So if I look back at our work, we had the 2.03 kilometers, but that was negative. We also had the 1.474 kilometers, but that was also negative. And then we had um, the 2.99, but that was the positive, right? So they had the negative 2.03, the negative 1.474, and the positive 2.99. All added together gives you a negative 0 0.514 kilometers. So overall displacement was 0.5 kilometers left or to the west. Okay, then we look at the sum of the y's. So going back to each of the individuals, we have the 1.7 kilometers. That was a positive. We then had uh, the 4.54, but that was a negative, so we'll subtract that. And finally, we had uh, the 0 0.802 also as a negative. Okay. And the sum of all of that ends up giving us a value of negative 3.642 kilometers. Okay, so what this means is overall in terms of displacement, overall from the origin, we went 0.514 kilometers negative, which would mean left, and 3.642 kilometers south down, right? Or if you want to think of this as like a coordinate point on your xy coordinate grid, your x coordinate point is the negative 0 0.514 and your y coordinate point is negative 3.642, right? So if you're thinking about, well, how am I going to graph that on an xy coordinate grid? Well, negative 0.5 
and negative 3.62 ends up somewhere down here, right? So from the origin, you end up down at that point, right? Where if we're going to draw that as a, uh, a nice little right triangle, right? You've got, well, you knew that this value here, right? Going across, that was the 0 0.514, and this value down here was 3.642, right? So that's the point, that's the point, and there's your right triangle. This overall ends up being what your displacement is, okay? And what you end up needing to do is just using Pythagorean theorem to get that value, right? So your value of your D, right? Notice how here I've just put the positive values on them, right? Uh, just because in terms of the triangle itself, when we do Pythagorean theorem, if we square a negative, it's going to give you the same number, okay? So the displacement here is going to be that 0 0.514 squared plus 3.642 squared, okay? Uh, and then when you do that, you end up getting a displacement value of uh, 3.68 kilometers, right? So again, it's all from where we started at the origin, right? Whatever we did, you know, here, here, here kind of thing. Overall, where did we end up in relation to that beginning spot, right? So this is our overall resultant vector here. Right? So we need to also figure out, okay, well, what's this angle? Right? We know what the length is, but at what bearing? And we know these two sides here, right, opposite and adjacent. So you can get your angle by doing tan inverse of opposite 3.642 divided by the adjacent of 0 0.514. That gives you a value of 82 degrees, right? And that's 82 degrees starting from the west line and then moving in a southern direction. So your final answer here would have been your 3.68 kilometers at a bearing of west 82 degrees south, okay? There are long problems, um, but it's just kind of go step by step uh, and then follow the, you know, follow the steps and you kind of get there. Okay. All right. Um, that was the last one I wanted to go through. What I'm posting for you is this video. Just run through a couple of these practice questions. These three are just about finding individual component parts, right? Not a sum of all of them, just individual component parts. Um, and then the other thing I'd encourage you to do, right? So again, these are the questions I want you to try. 21, 22, 23. These are the answers to them. So you can check your work. I'll post the full solutions as well. Um, and then I'd also like you to go back to maybe just to try one of, you know, what, the page that we did on adding vectors, right, where you had to try and find uh, the overall displacement. Uh, we did most of them using law of sines, law of cosines. Try one of them using vector components, right, and see if you get the same answer, okay? Uh, for those of you kind of maybe panicking right now going, um, I don't have my textbook at home with me, right, I left it at school or at somewhere else's house or it's in my locker. Don't worry about that at all, actually. I'm actually going to post uh, a screenshot of this page with these questions on it, okay? Because even these textbook questions are actually from a different version of the textbook. It's all the same ones, but the page numbers don't necessarily add up, right? So don't worry about the textbook actually looking it up. Um, I will just post the screenshot of these questions with these notes to try for vector components. And that's it.